today we have a special guest and we always enjoy David Stahl being here and uh, playing for us and his gift and talent that God has given him is such a blessing to all of us. So thank you, David, for being thank here you. today. Thank you, Greg. So, uh, well, this, uh, we're glad that uh, you can be here to, to hear this. And I'm going to go over some announcements. Um, today, after the service, we're going to have dinner on the grounds with our bi-monthly business meeting to follow. The evening Bible uh, study has been canceled because of this, but I know that Worthville is having a revival on Sunday night, uh, this Sunday and next Sunday. So uh, it starts at 6.30. I believe they said they have a meal at 5, but uh, if you're interested in that. So, uh, you know what happens usually every Wednesday and Friday. And next Sunday is daylight savings time. Uh, so you move your clock up one hour. And um, then also next Sunday is the ATM meeting at Gent. Uh, then on the 13th is the food pantry. Uh, then we have... Of course, St. Patrick's Day is the 17th with Signature Health Music Ministry that day. And finally, on the 20th, spring <coughs> begins. Yay! Although, we've had some spring anyway. I've got some things coming up. Have you all got things coming up? that? So it's like they're peeking up through there going, look at me! So, yeah, but that's, that's a blessing because I love spring with all the the beautiful colors and the freshness of the newness and all that. That's my favorite time. Then, on the 24th is Palm Sunday. Uh, so we go into our Easter celebration, really, for the whole month. And then we have Good Friday on the 29th. And then we have uh, the last Sunday of the month, which is the 31st, is Easter. And we'll be having sunrise service. And you ask what time? When the sun rises. <laughs> so, but we'll find out when that is and let you know closer to the time. So, uh, do we have any other announcements that you can think of? If not, this is um, the first Sunday of the month. And I want Georgia Miley. Uh, Lawson's not here yet. Bob Lindsay's not here. Morgan and Sam, if you all will stand so we can sing happy birthday to you. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Remember Jesus loves you. He made you so special. Happy birthday to Georgia and Morgan and Sam. You may be seated. And Berna has a gift for you. She's coming around. Also, where did that cat? There she is. Kathy, you, have, you and Doug have an anniversary. So, and Marlena and Greg. So how about you two stand so we can sing happy anniversary to you all. Happy anniversary to you. Remember Jesus loves you. He made you so special. Happy anniversary to you. Kathy and Doug and Alina and Greg. You may be seated. Any other announcements you can think of? Well, uh, we're glad you're here, and we're going to turn it over to you, David.
thankful that he looked beyond our faults and he saw our need and, and he saved us. And I'm thankful for that. Well, it's it's good to see all of you this morning. It's good to be here at, at Cove Hill. And for the next three or four hours, we're just going to sing some of the best uh, gospel music that, uh, that you know. I'm just kidding about the three or four hours, but we are going to have a good time uh, uh, today. And uh, we are here for one reason. And one reason only, and that is to lift up the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His name is above all names, and He is worthy of our praise today. Amen? So we're just going to have a great time, and uh, you're going to know a lot of the songs uh, that I do uh, this morning. And uh, so if you know them, you're just welcome to just sing right along with me, uh, to uh, uh, stomp your feet and clap your hands if that's what you want to do. And we're just going to have a great time. So is everybody ready this morning? Everybody ready? If you're ready, say praise the Lord. Praise All right, here we go.
much, everybody. It is such a pleasure to be uh, here with you uh, this morning. I just uh, love singing uh, the old songs of, of the church. I love the old hymns, and I love Southern Gospel, and I love a little bluegrass gospel, and I do a little praise and worship music as well, but I really like uh, the old, old songs. And, uh, and I don't know about you, but as I get older, uh, I start, I, I think about heaven a lot more. Do y'all find yourselves doing, doing that? You know, I've got, I know I've got fewer days ahead of me than I have behind me. And I told the church uh, where I was uh, last Sunday that I woke up uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, decided that I was old. And uh, I don't know if you ever, ever had that happen uh, to you before, but, uh, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I, I started having a, a big problem with one of my knees. And, uh, and I tell you, I could barely walk, and I had to get my mother's uh, old hurricane out, and I was just hobbling along with that. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm 63 years old. I'm no spring chicken, but I ought not have, be having to do this. And uh, so I finally went to the doctor, and, and he uh, did a couple of things for me and helped me out where now I can walk again, and I'm feeling a whole lot better. But that just made me think about a couple of things. Uh, you know, I hear... Uh, a lot of preachers uh, preach about heaven uh, these days, and you know what? No matter how great I think heaven is going to be, in my uh, imagination, I cannot even imagine what God has prepared for his children once we leave this place and we go to heaven. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that because there's not going to be any more sickness, no more sadness, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more death, no more cancer. No more taxes. Amen. <laughs> Not going to be any of those things. And I'm looking forward uh, to that day. But you know what? Uh, as, much, as good as heaven is going to be, now there is a place called hell as well. And I don't hear a lot of preachers preaching on that anymore. But, you know, hell is a real place, folks. And it is a place for those who have rejected our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And no matter how bad we think or I think hell is, it's going to be so much worse. I cannot even imagine what it's going to be like. And I got to thinking the other day about my knee. I was in so much pain I could barely walk. And have you, have you ever had a pain like that before? That, uh, a pain that, that has kind of happened to you? Well, I got to thinking that, that hell might be just a little bit like this. Can you imagine that having a pain, being in pain, for 24-7, 365, for all of eternity, with no hope of getting any better at all. Now, I know that's a simplistic explanation, and I know it's going to be much worse than that. You know, that doctor was able to give me a shot in my knee, and it was like a miracle. It just kind of helped me out and got me where I could walk again, and I was very thankful for that. But you know what? In hell, there's not going to be any shot. There's not going to be any cure. There's not going to be any way for us to escape that place. And no matter how bad we think hell is going to be, the worst thing about it is Jesus is not going to be there. He is not going to be there. And so I am so thankful that I have made arrangements to miss that place. And I'm on my way to heaven. And I hope that you are too. And I hope that if you are not by the end of this service, that you will make the decision to trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And, and I also hear a lot of preachers saying, you know, all you have to do is just believe on Jesus, believe on Jesus. Well, let me tell you, my Bible tells me that it's more than that. Does the Bible not tell us that the devil and his angels believe with fear and trembling? They believe. But it's more than that. We have to accept Jesus. We have to trust him. We have to give him our very lives and trust him as our Lord and Savior. I hope you've done that uh, today. And so I, I sing a lot of songs anymore about heaven because I think of it uh, quite a bit. And one of my favorite songs about heaven is an old song that was written by a fellow, and I know Brother Joe knows who he is because he's kind of an encyclopedia of gospel music. Uh, but uh, uh, any of you ever heard of Squire Parsons before? Yes. Uh, Squire Parsons wrote hundreds of gospel songs. But this, and Squire Parsons is still living today. He's old. Uh, and I don't even know if he sings that much anymore. But he is the one who wrote this song. And it's one of my favorite songs to sing about heaven. And if you know it, I'd invite you to sing along with me 
It's called Sweet Beulah Land. <laughs> Well done, 
good and faithful servant. You have kept the faith. You have finished the race. And I'm looking forward to going to heaven. You know, our, our, uh, our Lord, our God, is a God that keeps his promises. And I'm thankful for that. Uh, because I may make you a promise and I may uh, break it, not because I intend to, but just because I'm human and I make mistakes and I do break promises sometimes. But you know what? When God makes us a promise, you can take it to the bank. His word is full of promises to us. Promises like, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Isn't that a great promise? And then here's another one. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. You know what that tells me? That we have a hope in heaven if we just believe and trust and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And so we serve a God that keeps his promises. And you know what? We Baptists, us Baptists, we have a great song that we sing about promises. And it's in your hymn book, because I've already looked. Uh, it's on hymn number, uh, hymn number 335. Uh, and I'm going to ask you, if you will, to reach in front of you and grab a handful this morning, if you can. And uh, I'm going to ask you to sing this uh, song with me uh, this morning. And it's a song that talks about God's promises, standing on the promises of Christ my King, one of my favorite hymns. Now, we cannot sing about standing on the promises when we're sitting on the premises. Amen? So I'm going to ask, if you will, on this one song, if you will, to, to stand with me. And we're just going to sing together. So is everybody ready? If you're ready, say amen. amen. If you're able, all right, here we go.
after that last note. Uh, I don't know what happened to all that, but uh, it kind of dropped out on me. But uh, you know what? I, I call that uh, a Christian aerobics. You know, if you'll kind of sing like that, it will increase your lung power. You'll be able to work harder and, and work longer and sing louder. And Brother Joe may be able to preach a long way. You may not want that part of it. So, uh, but, uh, but anyhow, yeah, that's, uh, y'all did a really good job singing that song. Standing on promises. And you know what? Uh, we can, we can stand on promises of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, you know, I love just about all kinds of, of Christian music. Uh, well, maybe with the exception of Christian rap. I'm not really into that uh, too much. Uh, uh, if, if you uh, need a Christian rapper, I'm not your guy. You're going to have to get somebody else. Uh, but I do love uh, the old hymns of the church, and I love to sing them. And every once in a while, I'll even hear a country song that I kind of like that I think uh, would fit well in church. And such was the case uh, probably 17 or 18 years ago when this uh, song came out. I, I heard it on the radio, and I said, man, I'd, I'd love to do this song in church, but it's a country song, and I don't know if I should do it or not. And uh, the more I listened to it, it talked about sin, and it talked about temptation, and how in and of ourselves we cannot resist that. And when we have the Holy Spirit dwelling uh, within us, then we have the power to resist sin and uh, temptation. And this song not only went uh, to number one on the country charts, but it also uh, went to the top ten in the gospel charts. So I thought that gave me the green light to be able to do this song. So I, I'm going to do this song for you. It's a Josh Turner song. So any of you ever heard of Josh Turner before? Uh, the very first song that he charted. And by the way, he is a fine Christian man as well. And uh, the very first song that he did that charted is, uh, is this song. And I'd like to do it for you. Uh, it goes a little bit like this.
I've got some great news for you. He's coming again. One of these days, that eastern sky is going to split wide open, and those of us who have been bought by the blood of Jesus are going to rise up to meet him in the air. As this song says, some glad morning when this life is over, we'll fly away. If you know this, sing it with me this morning. It goes like this. <laughs> Savior who walks along beside us and gets us through those problems that we have. And when we can't see his footprints beside us, that means he's carrying us through those problems. You know, we, uh, folks, we're not immune. It's, it's like that song that Lynn Anderson sang, I, I beg your pardon, I never promised you a rose garden. You know, we're not promised a rose garden, are we? Because I can tell you, folks, I can tell you from experience, and many of you can, too, that uh, we're, we're either in the midst of a storm, we're coming out of a storm, or we're getting ready to go into a storm. 
That's just the way life is. That's the way it's happened ever since the fall of man. But aren't you thankful that we have a God that loves us, that cares for us, that sees us through the problems that we have? Doesn't mean we're not going to have problems. It just means he's going to see us through those problems. And Chris Tomlin did a song that uh, I'd like to do for you this morning that uh, it talks just about how great our God is. And you know what? I invite you to sing it to this morning. It's called How Great Is Our God.
uh, thank you for allowing me to come and uh, be here with you this morning. I hope I can come back again uh, 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 next year should uh, should the Lord carry. And I'm going to close with a song that uh, I want to ask you a question uh, before I do it. And uh, and uh, as we approach, uh, you know, we're in the month. Easter's coming a little bit earlier. Uh, this year's coming in March, March 31st. And uh, so it's in this month. And so... Uh, where we celebrate the, the death and the burial and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But have you ever thought about this when Jesus was on the cross? Have you ever thought about what the old devil was doing at that time when Jesus was on the cross? You know, the scripture doesn't tell us, uh, but I believe in my own glorified imagination, this is what I believe was going on. I believe when Jesus was on the cross, the devil was throwing a party. I believe that he believed that he had won the battle, that he had won the war, that he had defeated God, that he had defeated Jesus, and that he was going to rule the world, that Jesus was, was dead, was going to die, and he was going to be in charge of everything. Well, aren't you thankful that's not the way that it turned out? You know, Jesus did die on that cross, and they took him down, and they placed him in a borrowed tomb. And you know why it was a borrowed tomb? Because he was going to give it back. You know, you can go today and you can find the bones of Muhammad. You can find the bones of Confucius. You can find the bones of all these so-called prophets. But you know what? You can't find the bones of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know why? Because he ain't there. Amen? And I'm thankful for that this morning. And so he did. They did place him in that borrowed tomb. And he came out of that tomb. God miraculously rose him from the dead three days later. And he came out of that tomb victorious over sin, death, hell, and the grave. And we know it happened because the Bible tells us that over 500 people saw Jesus after he came out of that tomb. So we know that it's true. And after a time here on earth, about 30 or so days, he ascended to his Father in heaven where he sits at his right hand today, making intercession for you and for me. We have an advocate to the Father through the Son. Isn't that, isn't that great news? I don't have to go through anybody, and I don't want to offend any of my Catholic brothers and sisters, but I don't have to go through a priest. I don't have to go through anybody. I've got a direct line. To our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful for that. And I, I tell you what. Do you use that line daily? I do. I hope you pray it daily. I usually pray right before I go to bed. And I tell you what. My prayer list is getting so long. For all the people that are on my prayer list. That I'm praying for. I almost have to write them down. So I can remember everybody that I'm praying for. But I tell you what. I'm thankful for that. And just because, just, just like. No grave. There ain't no grave that can hold our Lord and Savior. There ain't no grave that's going to be able to hold me either. Thank God for that. And so I'm going to close with this song. It's called, Ain't No Grave Going to Hold My Body Down.
I've known Dave for several years. We've known each other longer than we want to talk about, maybe. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but his ministry is based on love offerings. And uh, we've got a place fixed there by the door to put a love offering in. This is how he does his ministry, is through this. And uh, I can guarantee you that every cent of it is used in the, uh, the ministry for God. And uh, I think a lot of it. And uh, we've been good friends. So, uh, also this morning I read, David, that there is 400 and uh, 4,200 different religions in the world. But there's only one empty grave. That's right. Amen. Only, and we only have one only one stairway to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. And you know what's great? What else is great this morning? His presence is right here, Amen. right here with us today. And if you don't know Him as Jesus Christ, as your Savior, please, please make that decision. I'm going to have a closing prayer, and I'll also pray, uh, bless the food while we're here, and uh, then we'll be dismissed. Okay? Let's pray. Okay. Now, let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, again, we have been so richly blessed today by sharing uh, David's talent with us, by being here this morning with us, and just lifting us up and carrying us through each day, Father. And Father, giving us the hope that we know that there will be a day that we will stand in the kingdom of God and we'll be there forever with you, Father, just praising and serving. And Father, it, it's, there's nothing better than having the hope of that in your life in each day. You know no greater peace than knowing that you are a saved child of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, this, uh, we ask now that you would bless the time of fellowship, the time of food, uh, the food that we have in the back. And Father, may this day be for, uh, for your honor and for your glory and everything be done according to thy will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us for our Sunday morning online worship service. Remember, we have returned to in-person worship services on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. If unable to attend in person, please continue to join us next Sunday at covehill.org as we gather together to worship the risen Savior. Until then, God's blessings be upon you.